Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to be doing the preemptory challenge and the challenge to the jurisdiction and the constitutional violations and all of that. This is the document. Um, I was just talking with someone yesterday, and they did the summary judgment document. Ladies and gentlemen, in a section like this right here, I didn't put a line, I didn't highlight it in red. So the individual just left it as respondents and plaintiffs or respondents and petitioner. Don't know why, <clears throat> but that's what the individual did. Uh, my phone may ring because a couple of people are supposed to be calling me and I will have to take those calls. But what we're going to do is we're going to play, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the audio of this document in our background uh, and by doing that you all will get to see what the document says and you'll see the amount of effort now I did have somebody help me with the proofreading and so now and they just finished it and sent it to me so I haven't read it like I said my phone was gonna be ringing Hold on. okay ladies and gentlemen it has been almost about an hour 1219 is when that call came in nope hasn't been about an hour i thought it was almost about an hour but it hasn't been about an hour no actually 1159 is when the call came in so i ended up making a couple other calls so uh, 1159 so almost about an hour uh social security they were calling uh you know dot their t's and cross their eyes because they are just going through the motions and i basically told them hey guys i'm tired of going through the motions I don't feel like playing those games. Well, you can't do this and you can't. Who are you to tell me what I can't do? <laughs> you don't control my life. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. And so we just had those type of conversations for the last uh, 30 minutes. Then I called a couple of other places. So now I'm back to talk about this document. This is Notice of Right to Access Government, a petition for redress via appeal referencing the right to challenge the statute and or rules of the court as unconstitutional not properly enacted okay the first thing we do is that right there I don't want it to be like that that's too much so let's do that then 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 that and that now what we do is because this is so large pay attention see how large them letters is we don't want that because that will be, let's do that right there. And then we're going to do that right there so that everything is on that side. You follow me? You feel me? I feel for you. I think I love me. I mean, that's what she said, ain't she? All right. I... Let's, let's make sure of this so that we don't end up wasting time. Let's go. That's what I want right there. I want it to be lined up. So even with this one, we get rid of all of that extra stuff. That's patent. We don't need no patent. You know, it's the patent rules. So we just get rid of all of that extra stuff. See, all the extra stuff is gone now. Gone. And this right here. We bring that up. This right here, we bring this down. And then with this, we tap, 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 tap. Uh-oh. Got to go back and back. And now I see this one I can't do. This one I got to do this way. Okay. Now I can, let's see if tab works now. Nope, tab still don't work. So let's see if we can just go back. Okay, and this is the tab part. Tab, 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 tab. Fall into the tab. Okay, and there we go. So that's how that's supposed to be. And watch what we do. We go, save me, save me. All right. And here we have... Uh... This shouldn't be. We were doing this for someone else. So we can get 
right there, we can do that and take care of that that way. Okay, now this right here can't be like this. So what I have to do is this, and then I have to drag because it has to be offset. It cannot be along the same line. So that takes care of all the other Roman, uh-oh, it's supposed to take care of all the other Roman numerals, but now I gotta take care of all the other Roman numerals. This is the problem. Let's do that. There we go. Whew. That's how you take care of all the other Roman numerals, y'all. All right, that's that Roman numeral. Then we go here to this Roman numeral. And then we do that. Now, this Roman numeral, you see how that ain't as purdy, ain't as dark? Because we have to do that right there. There we go. So that Roman numeral and that Roman numeral look like they brothers and sisters. Y'all see what I'm saying? Oh, see this right here? This ain't going to work. That says D. That should be B. Nope, we can't do that because I see what happened. So we do that. Uh-oh. We go A period. Oh, it ain't giving me my indent. Okay, let's do that. Since it wants to play games, we gonna do this one right here. And we gonna do this right here. Watch this. We have to go here. And then we go, where are my little alphabets? We can do this one. We do that one. See that right there? And then I take this. This is how we have to put documents together. So y'all just need to pay attention. Pay my attention. All right. But see, that B should not be. <laughs> that B shouldn't be. Yeah, it's just one of them Bs. Oh, man, what up, B? And then that B actually shouldn't be there. Oh, you just said it again. Because it says as follows. So we get rid of that B. And I have to do the formatting. So this should be B right here. Because it says as follows, A shouldn't be, A should be all inclusive. So there we go. See, that's B. What up, B? And then these. See how this is on the same line? Uh-oh, got to undo that. Where are we at? This is on the same line. Can't be on the same line. So we're going to move it out and let it take care of itself so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pause y'all while i do this uh um... sorry ladies and gentlemen i went ahead and took care of all the formatting of the whole document all the way down to the end here's the thing that i need to bring to you all's attention because it is absolutely necessary to bring this to your attention i downloaded an app i did the mod version of the app and it is true caller i downloaded the premium version this thing allows me to record Hold on one second. Let me see if I can demo them straight because I have my Bluetooth device right here. Bluetooth. Yeah, you, you can't live without Bluetooth. Ladies and gentlemen, I have my Bluetooth device and I'm going to go to one of my file managers because it saves it as a downloaded item. And I download, I mean, I go to my new or recent files. Here is, let's do the file with social security. Okay, hold on one second. Carlos, this is Brett Jones. Hello, how are you today? Okay, do you see how it got both sides of the conversation? I was on Bluetooth, ladies and gentlemen. I was on Bluetooth. It records both sides of the conversation. Now, I don't know if they make true color for Apple iPhones, but I do know they make them for Android. So that's a plug, okay? Just if you get the mod version, you can't update the software. It gets rid of the recording portion. All right, let's go ahead and take care of this. This is going to be roughly another 40 minutes. So just be prepared, okay? We're going to do the whole document. So those of you who want to know about the challenge, you got to pay attention to the challenge. Okay? I, I, I'm, I'm going to try something. I don't know if it's going to let me. No, I might as well do it right. All right, we're going to start here. Petition to dismiss original counter complaint we are getting rid of that part because it doesn't need to say that this is just a a challenge okay documenting the right to bring forth constitutional challenge okay we're going to start there now notice what i did to the document okay notice what i did to the document 
And here's the problem. Most of you are not by documenting the right to bring forth constitutional challenges. challenges. One, One, the secured the right secured of right the, people. the people. Two, Two it is a fiance intent to, to challenge the following issues in this issues presentment. presentment. Uh, uh, the statutes, the statutes and their application. Their application. B. B. Resumption, Resumption of, law. of law. C. C. Prima facie evidence. evidence. D. D. Policies, policies procedures, procedures, and rules of, and the, rules court. of the court. E. E. The right to challenge. Right to challenge. F. F. The misapplication, the misapplication of the sovereign of the immunities doctrine and rouge agents. And rouge agents. G. G. Definition, definition of the of supreme law of the law land. Of the universal, universal meaning. Universal meaning. I, I, the clerk's style, clerk manual. style manual, J, J, the policy of the policy allowing, allowing officers of the court of the to maintain court the status and the, status and the capacity, capacity of two different two branches, branches of government. Of government. K, K, the dual oath, oath taken by, by public officials, officials officers of the court, of the court and trust agents. Trust agents. L, L, the denial the of the protection, protection of the Bill of Rights and associated, associated inalienable, inalienable rights. rights. M. M. A challenge, a to, challenge the to the restriction placed upon the people, the people respecting the right to challenge a statute is unconstitutional. unconstitutional. N. N. A challenge, a challenge to the district, district jurisdiction. jurisdiction. O. o. A, challenge a challenge to the unconstitutional, to the unconstitutional requirement, requirement which prohibits the learned jury from interpreting the laws and their statutes. statutes. Three. Three. Each of the aforementioned, Each of the aforementioned points, points affect the rights of the affiant directly and or indirectly with reference. reference. To the, to the instant matter, and if I does hereby exercise the right to highlight the conflict the under the secured, secured rights, rights protected, protected by the Supreme Law of the Land. Of the land. It, is it is fully understood, understood that Congress has long has required long every state of the, state of the Union, insular, insular possessions, possessions, forts, forts magazines, magazines, and or territories to adopt the Bill of Rights of the Constitution for the United States of America and incorporated within, within the framework of the framework secured rights of the, of the people within people their jurisdictional within district, district, the courts have long have recognized long the aforementioned requirements. requirements. See also, See also. E. McPherson, e. McPherson, the political, the political history, history of the United States, States of America, America during the period of Reconstruction 184, 1871. E. Foner, Reconstruction, Reconstruction America's, America's Unfinished Revolution, Revolution 1863 to 1877, P. P. 272, 1988. Included the case law. In 1874, <laughs> Congress passed legislation to ensure that every territory's organic act included the protections of the Constitution and civil rights embodied in other federal laws. C. Reverend Stat. 2. Positive Law Title 28 U.S.C. Constitutional Challenge. An affidavit supported by court opinion with federal challenge and questions incorporated within its framework. Affidavit supported by statements of claims. Constitutional questions and challenges. Stated claims. 1. This court has a constitutional duty to enforce the laws as intended by Congress, who obtained their authority from the people of this great state. 2. Two. This court this is said court to be court of law, court of hence. law. Hence. If this is a if court of law, then why does the court rely on statutes, statutes when statutes are only the appearance of law? Three. Three. The presumptions, the presumptions in favor of the validity of a statute are ordinarily only prima facie. A presumption, a nor so called legal theory, is not law and has never been considered law. In fact, in fact, the word presumption does not even appear anywhere in law. The, the supreme law of the state is the Constitution, which is not an opinion, as is a fact that has been accepted generally by the people of. Just waiting for it to catch up to me. By putting in presumably or presumed or assumed and or believed putting that the courts don't like it when you come to conclusions so by putting presumably held blah 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 it's not no longer a statement now i need y'all to hold on a second one second y'all because he, he he pausing okay but when i come back he gonna be talking so y'all be ready one second Okay, I'm back. Uh -huh.
One second, everyone. In fact, in fact the word the presumption does not even appear anywhere, anywhere in law. The supreme law of the state, state is the Constitution, constitution which is not which an is opinion. Not this opinion. is a fact this that has been accepted generally by the people of this great state, state, the state, the state legislature, legislature as well as the state courts. State courts. Therefore, Therefore, if the Constitution is the law, then why do the courts not rely on the law and the mere appearance of law? Four. Prima facie. The definition of this term. Ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that was another one of those calls to one of those health agencies. They disrespected me, and I don't tolerate disrespect anymore. So I file complaints. We'll talk about the complaint filing and why I file complaints and why I document the filing of complaints. We'll talk about that in another video. So let's continue, shall we? Four. Four. Prima facie. The, the definition of this term only term symbolizes the appearance of, and not the actual, actual substance. substance. How can something by mere appearance be construed and considered as law and or evidence of law? The answer to this question must be based on the law and not a principle, a nor a policy, a nor a practice. The law of the land as noted above is supreme, not the statute, a nor a prima facie a presumption of law as such was the will of the people. It is the people who empower Congress to express their will and limits the authority of Congress to enact laws that would abridge the rights of the people to a fair, impartial, lawful proceeding. S. In a trial otherwise known as due process of law secured by the Bill of Rights and the supreme law of the land including the rights to property. 3. Is the court aware of the constitutional requirements? 1. Whereas the third section of Article 6 of the Constitution of the United States mandates that the Senators and Representatives mentioned above and the members of the several state legislatures, executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states, shall be bound by oath of affirmation to support the Constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States, and 2. Two. Whereas, Whereas, an act to regulate the time and manner of administering certain oaths is the first law passed by the United States Congress after the ratification of the Constitution of the United States Statutes at Large as one stat. Sorry, let's let him catch up. I don't know what he's going through. Come on now. Rod, the United, United States, States Congress States after the ratification, after the ratification of, the of the Constitution of the United States, United States Statutes at Large as one stat. As one stat. 23, 23 and, and 3. three. Whereas, whereas one use, see 112, 112 statutes, statutes at large, large contents, contents admissibility as evidence and mandates that the United, United State statutes at large shall be legal evidence of laws in all the courts of the United States, the several states, the territories, and the insular possessions of the United States, not apparently the law of the land in all the courts of the United States, the several states, the territories, and the insular possessions of the United States. Oh, come on now, Rod. You, you're getting on my nerves, you know? Ain't no need of you stopping. You know what? As a matter of fact, let's get rid of Rod. Forget Rod. Bye-bye, Rod. It appears that this is the case. By appearance, therefore, the appellant questions continues as follows. This is going to... 
Oh, I, I, it wants me to get rid of the S. It wants me to say continue as follows. First question, the court operates under presumption of law. A presumption is not evidence, but it is a rule of law which governs until sufficient evidence to the contrary appears. And because it appears that a presumption violates due process clause of the first, fourth, and fifth amendments to the United States Constitution's Bill of Rights, let's do that. B I L L O R I G H T A S. Such appears to violate an individual's right to innocence until proven guilty. Because they claim that you're innocent until proven guilty, that's a presumption of innocence. No, it is not the presumption of innocence, it's the right to innocence until proven guilty. If all one would need do is bring forth sufficient evidence to the contrary as such would mean that a presumption could be utilized to disprove a presumption which apparently finds no standing no ground nor foundation within the constitution of the united states we got to put a comma then we go t-h-e-l-a-w comma as defined by the people of the United States when mandating that no person shall be held to answer for a crime nor be deprived of life liberty or property without due process of law the courts have presumed that this applies only to criminal matters however the deprivation of the right to life and liberty and or property does not always involve a criminal matter note that the fifth amendment applies to civil matters as well and to bring forth evidence that is not solidified and or based on reality as conclusive denies an individual's right to innocent denies the individual sorry s-e-c-u-r-e-d secured right to innocence and not to be deprived of life, liberty, and or property, as presumption of law would violate due process clause of the Constitution for the United States of America. Clause of the, of the F-I, uh-oh, F-I-F-T-H, Okay, Fifth Amendment of the Constitution for the United States of America. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't want you doing that. Sorry, hit the wrong button. Uh-oh, S-E-C, you are. Oh, it's got an S on the end. That, that, that secured, it ain't supposed to be. All right. Since 1 U.S.C. 112, statute at large, content, contents, admissibility as evidence, and mandates that the United States statute at large shall be legal evidence of laws, how is it possible that a presumptive code where only the title was construed as positive law, gotta highlight that, positive in law, can regulate what is or is not evidence of law. Is this not similar to the pot calling the kettle black or a dog disliking a wolf because it presumes it is not a canine? So. comma the wolf is not a canine that's what we're looking for in other words it does not permit due process nor does it make sense Let's get rid of that. Yeah, I know I messed it up. Sorry. My fault. No. See, I, I can't do the spelling right now, so I'll correct that later. How is it possible to take something that is not and presume that it is unless someone comes up with and says that it isn't and then propose that it isn't to remain a fact. Doesn't that make sense? 
there is one absolute truth, comma, that no one can challenge. So we got to get rid of that comma. There's one absolute truth that no one can challenge, and such is that two different truths cannot exist. Okay? You can't have two different truths. Either something is the truth, or it simply is not. Either a statute is law, or it is not. We want to highlight that one. Ladies and gentlemen, statute can't not be prima facie evidence of law. There's no such thing in the Constitution as prima facie evidence of law. If the Bill of Rights is the supreme law of the land, and every state is required to mirror the Bill of Rights, then if it ain't part of the Bill of Rights, then it ain't law. Got to make it part of the Bill of Rights or it ain't law. That's what it's saying. As demonstrated, it is fundamentally agreed upon by the courts that, and we got to do this, that's got to be capitalized. Statutes are not law. I didn't say it, the court said it. It does not state that due process, regardless of what statement is made afterwards, what words are conjured together to create some sort of a spell as statutes, okay. Due process, regardless of what statement is made afterwards, what words are conjured together to create some sort of a spell All right, prima facie, that statutes are only, change the fact that statutes are only, are not law, but only prima facie, as statutes, codes, regulations, and ordinances are not law when we are referencing the supreme law of the land. Is this not correct? What do you want not to be? That seems like, oh, no, that's correct. Again, it would be helpful if we received precise answers from the court because this matter involves everyone who enters through the doors either electronically, telephonically, or video conferencing and or physically. Other evidence in question supporting this affidavit. The fees associated with the court are budgeted by the fiscal into the fiscal year's budget for the court which is applied into the court, which universally, um, to the court's universal budget universally, the court's annual budgets universally around the nation. Is this double jeopardy resulting in a violation of the Fifth Amendment of the United States of America Bill of Rights guarantee which prohibits such deprivation? Such a deprivation. Does the Constitution prohibit the government, whether local or national, from subjecting the great citizens, no, it's not great, it's supposed to be state, citizens to
on constitutional deprivations. To require a citizen or a taxpayer to pay a, the court a second time after they have received an annual budget allocation Okay, does this amount to unjust enrichment on B-E-H-A-L-F of O-T-H-E-C-O-U-R-T-S and T-H-E-I-R-T-E-R-S-O-N-A-L-L. -E -L -L. I know I spelled that wrong and I knew I did this wrong. Come on, where is of and correct it. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm tired, I, it just don't make no sense. So I'll, I'll correct. I have another word up here I have to correct. It's already highlighted and underlined. And so when I do the spell check, I'll go back and I'll correct it. It's in this paragraph right here. Okay? And I will correct it. All right. But anyway. Yeah. Nope, that ain't even it. See, come on, give me my spell check. Like I said, tie it, tie it, tie it. Let's do this. Like I said, I can't, it can't think straight. So we're gonna step off. Get off of there. All right. I just did that, and it said it was wrong. See, tie it, y'all. Just tie it. I really am tired. Uh. And then somebody, I had a consult scheduled for today, preparing for that, ready to wake up and take care of the consult, and the person canceled, but they had a legitimate reason for canceling. Okay, so I didn't get a lot of sleep. I had to get up twice for the, with the dogs last night because they got to go for their walk. That's how we do things around here. We walk our dogs, even in the cold at night. So I don't get a lot of sleep because I, I want to train them we have a um, we have a rapport now so i'm spending time with the animals now we are i'm getting on the their level i'm actually getting down on the ground which is difficult for me with this disease um but we're we're having our little consult okay we're doing our own little consult now number four other evidence in question supporting this affidavit the fees associated with quarter budgeted, okay, we already did that. To require a citizen or taxpayer to pay uh, from a payer of federal, uh, federal contributive taxes, not a violation of due process. Does it amount to unjust enrichment on behalf of the courts and their personnel? Uh, to the, this, a D V A N T A G E uh D <sighs> Citizen Petitioner. Let's do it this way. Yeah, that's that double tap. Okay, state citizen petitioner. Now, you see this right here? I don't want to have to correct that every time, so we capitalize that, and we go here to replace. This is so we can get it right, y'all. And we're going to do that right there, and we're going to capitalize that C, and we're going to replace it. We're going to do whole, world, whole words. We're going to match case, and we're going to do whole words only. 
and we're gonna do replace all. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, 23 replacements. Okay, because even though proper words and names are supposed to be, we're gonna do that right there, but proper names and words are supposed to automatically be capitalized. Microsoft have set up their system so that it is not automatically capitalized. Watch this one, there's one more. Uh, S-T-A-T-E-S. -E then we got S-T, uh-oh. We're going to replace all with this one. Okay, nine times. And then we're going to get rid of that last. And we're going to get rid of that last S. And then we're going to do that four times. Seven times. Okay. Up and down one time. All right. The courts continue to exercise a practice of requiring fees for documentation, which should be readily accessible. For example, courts charge excessive fees for transcripts and or records and or copies of records that may be vital to an individual matter. Uh, Uh-oh, got to get rid of that. How is this possible when accommodations via budgetary mechanism and procedures, let's, let's do this, are readily in place, are already in place. These additional fees, I don't know why they put that double space there. That That is irritating to me. But anyway, it's a process. These additional fees, which have already been allocated and accounted for, as set, we're going to do in the N P R E S U M B L Y, presumably set aside in the annual budgets, do not require, let's put a comma here do not require the payment of these additional fees after they have already been allocated for and set aside in the annual budget for the courts. This does appear to amount to double jeopardy. Uh, no, we're going to put, when taken into account with the congressional budget, which is delegated to the courts, uh, uh, we got to get rid of, oh, that's right, because I didn't do this court. I did the courts with an S. So we're going to do this court with the lowercase without the S. So let's go to the hub. C-O-U-R-T. And then we go replace all whoa hold on no hold on gotta make sure okay there are 62 because there's case law in here where they do the same thing so we're gonna replace all because it did the first one but we're gonna replace all the other ones we're gonna make sure hey really you already did all of the courts Ladies and gentlemen, I think it did it without me telling it to do it. So let's make sure. We're going to go backwards. Okay. Now we're going to go replace all. 62 times, y'all. 72 replacements in this 13-page document. That's how many times they take court and they lower my case it. Delegated to the court through the Administrative Office of the United States Courts Judicial Conference Committee with input from the courts advise the administrative office of the United States courts as it develops an annual judiciary budget for approval by the United States Congress. This happens every year. They get a budget, they apply for a budget, and then they charge people. 
after they've already been paid. That's where you can find that, where it shows that they're budgeted for all of those things. It is the affiant's belief that this successfully rebuts the presumption that the affiant is required to pay such fees. The affiant hereby challenges such a process and or procedure requiring the payment of fees a second time to be permitted access to the judicial branch of government. We're going to do judicial and we're going to capitalize these two. You capitalize each word and we're going to do government. So replace we're gonna replace government because government should not be lowercase and we're gonna do judicial and There's no reason these proper nouns should be lowercase. But Google, Microsoft, and these other corporations work in conjunction with the court system to do this. To make it to where you have to literally capitalize and do grammar, grammatical corrections. Why? Because the courts doesn't speak English. No speaking English. The courts don't speak English, ladies and gentlemen. The courts speak legalese, legal terminology. All right. We're going to start from here. There's been no evidence placed on any record with the exception of a presumption. N D I N S T A N T M A T T E R. It doesn't matter. No, I have to. I met the. I met the copy, then we assistance to the affiant should not be considered a privilege, whereas the payment of fees. Where the payment of fees is involved as such is not is also not mentioned in the constitution This affiant is formally requesting the court to assist the affiant in the non-payment of fees to attain redress by way of appeal. Okay, this affiant does hereby bring forth the former constitutional challenge to any such requirement. Such requirement rule and or statute. is a violation of the affiant's right to due process and access to court for redress agreements. Let's not do four, let's do through. Okay, we'll do via. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on page 14. I mean, four or 14. We're not gonna cover the whole thing, it's just too much. Please be patient with the affiant.
as affiant has to reason with such practices uh, how such practices can be constitutional. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution, Bill of Rights, comma, guarantees to every citizen and every person, pay attention, every citizen and person. The Constitution does not say citizen within any of the first eight amendments. You only start seeing citizen in the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, and it's only referring to state citizens, not federal citizens. Keep that in mind the next time you read it. It further says that Congress shall make no law, budgetary rule, statute at large, federal code, federal ordinance, penal code, penal ordinance, regulatory procedure, act, mandate, and or other mechanism that interferes with the law prohibiting and or abridging the right of the people to petition the government for redress of grievance. Therefore, if the court still receives an annual budget and the courts are required to document the necessity for such an for such to either pay a fee fill out a waiver or beg for assistance the affiant does not think that this is the will of the people and the affiant does not believe that there is a constitutional amendment bill of rights whether on a state level or national level, that would permit the government to charge the people twice just to obtain access to resources and or redress. Give me a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Be right back. Um, we're going to start with paragraph number Officers, officers have, have absolute, absolute immunity, immunity and extend, and extend that, that very same, same immunity to the other, to the other officers, officers of the court, of the court who are all part, of the, all part of the executive branch. branch. Ladies and gentlemen, this, indicates this indicates they are acting outside, outside the scope outside of their judicial, judicial authority, which is a denial of affiance right to a fair and impartial and hearing and to justice, and, and six. six. Affiant, affiant further believes that the court and the executive and branch joined together to intimidate affiant as a scare tactic by permitting an armed officer in the courtroom and positioned near my person. I believe that this type of conduct amounts to coercion, nor tampering with a witness in this instant matter as affiant stood as a witness to the facts. Seven. Seven. Affiant, Affiant further, further believes that the use of presumptions, a nor prima facie is so called. Ladies and gentlemen, what I've done is, I have done the proofreading up until now. I will put this up. The link for this will be underneath the video. Those of you who want the constitutional challenges, who have had several cases, go over it. You can add other claims and or challenges to the document. However, I would leave the claims here. If it's inapplicable to your particular case, don't worry about it. Let them make that determination. So what? They'll say you're using a form template. So what? It ain't like you don't have the right because guess what you're doing? You're doing it as an affidavit. Because as mentioned before, this document has an acknowledgement. That's how you want to put this into the court. Okay? That's how you want to put this to the court. So... So that's how you want to do that. And we'll put the giraffe. Man, I had a giraffe. We'll put the giraffe on its own page. 14 pages. Well, 13 pages of an instrument, but 14 pages all together. Now watch this. Say, I'm going to give it a different name, but it's a petition to challenge jurisdiction. It's the temporary name. But I'll give it a different name. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give it... Wee! I got a meeting to go to in three minutes, y'all, so I can't stay on. Uh, write the challenge to statute. We're going to do write the challenge to statute. Copy. So we're going to do file. And I really do have to go because I am the one conducting the meeting. So 
y'all are just going to have to bear with me and know and we'll get rid of this part right here and later today write to challenge the statute that's this document okay i gotta go ladies and gentlemen i hope y'all take care just let you know we said we were going to get this challenge constitutional challenge document up that's what we've done gotta go y'all take care adios arrivederci sayonara y'all know all the